I'm sorry, I I'm a bit late. Um, um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure how to start this. Um, <clears throat> I suppose I, I should start by uh, telling you something about the, uh, the brewery. Um, it, it, it's old, of course, uh, very old, and um, uh, and it was founded in 17, 1778. Yes, yes, I think that's right. Um, so, it's a very old brewery, and um, we use uh, traditional uh, production uh, methods, and uh, the products themselves are very, um, very, very, very old. Um, as you can see, and um, and <coughs> we have an imperial stout, which is very, uh, again, very traditional, and it's described as um, dark, immense, rich, with a depth of burnt fruitiness. This beer is an ideal nightcap. Imperial Stout is 50% um, stronger than any of the other beers in, in the uh, export premium range. There. Um, well, oh, we also do uh, a lager, we also make a lager, uh, w w which is European, uh, a U European type beer. Um, and, and, well, sales have increased a lot o over the last, uh, last year. Of course, we were a family firm. Well, in fact, we still are a, a family firm. Uh, as you know, the, um, <coughs> the present owner is Ben Westwood. Um, there was a takeover bid. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure when, but it was resisted. And um, we continue to run um, as, as a family firm. And this is important um, for, for the corporate image. Um, well, in fact, this is why we're here today, to discuss the corporate image and decide if we, well, it needs to change. We, we also have horses. Um, you may have seen them uh, delivering beer to the local pubs. Yes? Yes, yes. Um, production has actually um, dropped uh, a little uh, over the last few years, although, although profits have actually held up. Um, and that's something we need to discuss. I mean, can we actually continue as a small independent brewery? Anyway, that, that's about it. So um, that is the main question today. Um, so uh, I don't know whether that helps at all, but uh, it, it's all I can think of really. So um, I'll leave. Um, I'll leave. I think that's that. So I'll leave it there. Okay. <coughs> Right, the tour. I've uh, got some overheads here to to give you a picture of... Uh... Oh, well, never mind, we'll manage without. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll tell you something about the plant. We'll be having a look around. I don't know how much you know about us. Perhaps some of you have been here before. Anyway. I'll start by telling you a bit about the plant, so that later you can um, ask questions, and it should help to understand the process. So, here we are in, in the main building. Hello, and welcome to Standard Electronics. I'm Jeff Maxwell, the factory manager in charge of the plant you'll be seeing today. I know some of you have come a long way today, so we aim to make your tour both interesting and worthwhile. Before we start the tour, I'd like to give you a brief presentation about the company. This will help to put the production side of the business into context. My talk will last about 15 minutes, and I'll be using the flip chart. 
Now, there's quite a lot to cover, so I'd be grateful if you'd hold any questions until the end of my talk. As you can see, I've divided up my presentation into three main parts. Firstly, we'll run briefly through the history of the company. Secondly, I'll tell you something about our main markets. This is important in understanding the production process. And finally, I'll come to the people, our most important asset. OK, let's start with the history. Standard started out as a private limited company when it was first established in 1935. In any case, I'll, um, I'll tell you something about the plant so that later you can ask questions. And it should help to understand the process. So, here we are in the main building. Not much of a building. Anyway, uh, we've been based here for more than 50 years. One of the country's best-loved engineering firms. Anyway, it, uh, it started back in, in 1943, when there was a need for high-quality connections. You know, the sort Britain's famous for. Mm. What we use is a process called pre-priodine electrostatic coating. In this process, we apply it's important in understanding the production process. And finally, I'll come to the people, our most important asset. OK, let's start with the history. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to give you a history lesson, just a few key dates. Standard started out as a private limited... ...went public. So, we've had a pretty eventful 60 years or so. Anyway, I'll leave the history there. If you're interested, you'll find more about Standard in this pretty brochure. You should find one of them amongst all the other bits of paper our PR people love to give out. So let's turn now to a brief overview of our main markets. If you look at this chart, you'll see our slice of the pie, which in the European... By the way, you may have seen the story in the news today about our main competitor, Manton. It seems they're going to bring out a new product which could seriously infringe the copyright. It's a lawsuit. So we'll have to wait and see how the market reacts. Anyway, let me get back to what I was saying about new markets for standard. I think we have to say that... Nobody really knows what the next century will bring. What's for sure is you need people who can adapt quickly. And that brings me to the final part of this short introduction to standard, and that is to talk about our people. As I said, they are our most important asset. Our total worldwide headcount developed staff. We've even sponsored a group to sail around Britain. So, before I go on, are there any questions about our personnel policy?